The problem with most dogmatic personal finance black and whites is that they place all of the emphasis on the financial outcomes and none of the emphasis on the social and quality of life outcomes. Or at the very least, the latter is just an afterthought. In groups of people, whether they be friends, colleagues, romantic partners, you name it, it comes down to right-sizing your cost-benefit analysis. Back in the day, when I was super, super hyper-frugal, I was penny-pinching everywhere possible, I would go to free exercise classes at the studio where I taught. So a couple days per week, my friends from class would walk over to a coffee shop afterward to grab coffee or a muffin and sit around and talk for 30 minutes after class, but before the workday started. It was very early in the morning, so it was kind of a nice little activity. This was such a low effort, high quality time together where you're riding that endorphin wave, you're getting some caffeine, you're starting the day with friends bright and early except I used to frequently skip this type of gathering or attend but then awkwardly sit and not drink or eat because I was trying to save money. And in my purely Ramseyville worldview, the $5 that I would have spent on cold brew on its face was a waste because I had cold brew at home. In Ramseyville, where we are only concerned with financial outcomes, I was making the quote-unquote right choice. But I wasn't spending $5 for cold brew. I was spending $5 for 30 minutes of enjoyable quality time with friends in a relatively cheap special group bonding experience. And sure, it's possible to create that type of community for free too. We could have gathered somewhere else without food or drink, but the point stands, especially when the third spaces in Western society are typically coffee shops and restaurants. And in a cost-benefit analysis that considers both the life experience juice that one gets for the $5 squeeze, our outcome in this example has an incredibly high ROI. The chance to strengthen your bonds with friends and enjoy a sense of belonging, that is some of the best money you will ever spend. It's very cheap. I don't have to plug $5 into a compound interest calculator to know that I valued those experiences more than whatever three-digit number it's going to spit out 20 years from now. Coffee out is something we point to as quintessentially frivolous. It's where we venture into the mix of aphorisms and mental models and life rules that apply a scarcity fueled rigidity to what is valuable enough to spend money on and what's not. And you spend a dollar to three dollars on a cup of coffee, which is approximately a hundred dollars a month. An example, a hundred dollars a month in a Roth IRA. In that case, my choosing not to go because I wanted to save five dollars was ultimately meaningless compared to the time and community that I gave up to keep my $5. It's not that you have to say yes every single time, but if we're only ever concerned about the dollar value associated, we may be missing the forest for the trees. You are just really wasting money. I wouldn't buy a cup of coffee anywhere ever, and I can afford it because I would not insult myself by wasting money that way and I can afford it, and chances are you can't. You know what they say about the road to hell.